Hello, this is Dr. Maria Weber, and this is your mini lecture about electromotive force, EMF. There are many types of voltage sources. These devices supply current if connected to a resistance. But on the small scale, the potential difference within these devices creates an electric field that exerts forces on charge causing current. And so we call this special type of potential difference an electromotive force or an EMF. So sometimes you'll hear me talking about EMFs that just is referring to an electromotive force and all uh, devices that carry an electromotive force, an EMF, will report that EMF in units of, of volts. Here are some examples of different types of devices that uh, supply an electromotive force. And we have maybe the one that you think about most commonly are batteries supplying EMFs to us within circuits. Um, but here are other examples of devices that can supply an EMF that are using renewable energy. So here we have wind turbines. Uh, this is a um, hydroelectric power plant. And here we have solar cells, which are also really great devices that can uh, create potential differences within the device and therefore create an electromotive force to drive current when connected to resistance. Now, all sources of EMF have an internal resistance. And when I'm talking about the internal resistance of these EMF devices, I'm going to refer to that internal resistance as little r, lowercase r here. But in reality, the voltage output measured across the terminals of a battery, let's use that as an example, is called the terminal voltage. And this voltage is always a little bit smaller than the EMF that 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 battery could supply because the voltage source has some internal resistance. So here we have our battery, which we can represent here by uh, kind of the standard, um, standard symbol that I've been using to represent uh, voltage sources already. We've got the long bar here and then the shorter bar, the long bar is the positive end of our uh, power or of our voltage source, the um, uh, smaller bar is the negative end of our voltage source. And so here we're modeling that as this is the, um, the EMF right here, and then this little resistor here is our internal resistance inside this battery. And so the terminal voltage, this V right here, is equal to the EMF that the battery can supply minus the current running through the circuit times the internal resistance of our battery. Okay, so let's talk about what happens when we put our power sources, or our EMF sources, in either series or parallel. Because you might want to do that in certain ways because they can provide you with different results. So for this first one, we have two EMF, or two voltage sources, in um, series with each other, kind of a similar thing happens inside a flashlight. If you stack two or three or more um, batteries in series inside a flashlight, the EMF for batteries in series adds up. Okay, so we've got our two batteries. We're assuming here that they have the same EMF for both of them. And so then the total EMF that we could supply to the circuit will be the EMF of the first one plus the EMF of the second one. And now each of our batteries has an internal resistance. And so the internal resistance of these two batteries in series would be the sum of in their individual internal resistances since they're in series. Okay. And so if we think about Ohm's law, V is equal to IR, we can solve that for the current in our circuit. So here, the current flowing in our circuit is equal to the total EMF of our circuit divided by the total resistance. So the total EMF for our batteries in series would be the EMF of the first one plus the EMF of the second one and divided by the total resistance of our circuit, which is the resistance of the first battery plus the resistance of the second plus the resistance of some device uh, which is in series with our batteries. Okay, now what happens when we have our batteries in parallel? So here we have our two batteries in parallel and they're supplying a potential difference to our uh, load right here. 
Now, when we have objects in parallel, remember that the voltage drop across them is the same. So let's assume that these batteries are identical to each other, and so they have the same EMF. And so if they do that, no matter how many batteries we put in parallel with each other, if they all have 12 volts EMF, then our circuit will only be able to have 12 volts supplied to the entire circuit as long as all those batteries are in parallel with each other, okay? And now their internal resistances are not going to add together like they did for our series batteries. Um, just like how we add up resistors in parallel, the internal resistances for these two batteries in parallel, the equivalent internal resistance for those batteries in parallel is going to be one over R total is equal to one over internal resistance of the first one plus one over the internal resistance of the second one. And these uh, batteries in parallel are in series with the load in the circuit. So the total current in this circuit will equal to the EMF of one of these batteries divided by the inverse of one over the internal resistance of the first plus one over the internal resistance of the second plus the resistance of our device in, um, in series with these batteries. Uh, and we're adding these two together because whenever we create essentially our uh, equivalent, um, uh, our equivalent EMF source here by considering these two together in parallel, the map battery or that equivalent EMF source is then in series with this load in the circuit. Okay, and so in combining batteries in different ways in series and parallel, you're able to change the, uh, the voltage or the EMF supplied to the entire circuit and also change the current that you can supply to the entire circuit. All right, so now we're going to practice working with batteries in parallel. And so here's an example problem. We have two batteries with identical EMFs of 12 volts, and they are placed in parallel with each other, and they're supplying a potential difference to a device with a resistance of 100 ohms. And the internal resistance of each of these batteries is 0 0.5 ohms. What current flows through this device right here with the resistance of 100 ohms? So we have two batteries here with identical EMFs of 12 volts, and they are placed in parallel with each other. And these batteries in parallel are supplying a potential difference to a device here with a resistance of 100 ohms. And each one of these batteries here has an internal resistance, which I'm representing by this little R here. So here I've got my um, longer and my shorter parallel bars to represent the uh, positive and negative sides of my battery terminal. And then I'm representing the internal EMF, or sorry, the internal resistance of my battery here as these smaller little resistors and they have resistances, internal resistances represented by the little r right here. And those internal resistances for these pair of identical batteries are both point, or both 0.5 ohms. Okay, and so we're trying to find the current that flows through this device with the resistance of 100 ohms. So we're looking for the total current, essentially, through our circuit. Okay, and so we can really just go back to Ohm's law, V equals IR. But if I solve it for the total current in my circuit, that's equal to the total potential difference of my circuit divided by the total resistance in my circuit. Now, because these two batteries are in parallel, the total voltage that they're supplying to our device here is 12 volts, 12 volts only. Now, if these batteries were in series with each other, they would be delivering 12 times plus 12 or 24 volts of, um, to our 
our resistor right here, or to our device with some resistance right here. So in this circuit that we have here, our total voltage is just the EMF of any one of those batteries. And then we have to divide it by the total resistance in our circuit. And this total resistance is going to be the resistance of the load that we have in our circuit. That's the resistance of our device here, plus the total internal resistance of our batteries. Now, since these batteries are in parallel with each other, their internal resistances are in parallel with each other. So we have to use the equation for the resistance for resistors in parallel in order to find this total internal resistance. So 1 over our total internal resistance is equal to 1 over uh, the internal resistance of one battery plus 1 over the internal resistance of the other. So that's going to be 1 over 0 0.5 ohms plus 1 over 0 0.5 ohms, okay? And so 1 over 0 0.5 plus 1 over 0 0.5, take the inverse of that, that gives us our total internal resistance of these batteries in parallel, and that's going to be 0 0.25 ohms, okay? So now, because these batteries, even though they're in parallel with each other, they are in series with this load that we have here, this device with some resistance of 100 ohms. So the total resistance in our circuit is going to be the sum of our total internal resistance for our batteries in parallel plus the resistance of my resistor here or my uh, device right here. Okay, and so then we can find the total current flowing through our system. That's going to be 12 volts supplied from our batteries. They're both in parallel. So because of that, they're both supplying the same potential difference to our circuit. And so um, V is 12 volts. It's 12 volts divided by 100 ohms with a resistance of our device plus 0.25 which is the, our internal resistance. And we take 12 divided by 100.25 ohms. That gives us a total current running through our circuit here. Of, I'm going to go out to quite a few decimal places, 0 0.1197 amperes. Now, sometimes it is advantageous to connect a whole bank of batteries in parallel because it increases the current due to the overall de decreased internal resistance of those batteries in parallel while keeping the same applied EMF that they would have individually if all batteries that are connected in parallel have the same EMF to start with. So let's consider a single battery here with an internal resistance of 0.5 ohms, seen from our previous problem, an internal EMF of 12 volts, and we've got a, a load of resistance of 100 ohms. So considering this single battery with an internal resistance in this circuit here, um, what would the current be through this particular circuit? Well, that current would be I total is equal to our EMF supplied divided by our total resistance. And in this case, we've got 12 volts for EMF from our battery. And our total resistance, because our battery is in series with our resistor, the total resistance is going to be the 100 ohms from our, our, our load here, uh, plus the internal uh, resistance of our battery, so 0 0.5 ohms. So if we take 12 volts divided by 100.5 ohms, then we find that the current in this case is actually 0 0.1194 amperes. Okay, so that's just a little bit smaller than the current that we got over here by taking that same battery but connecting it in parallel to another battery. And so we see then that our current for these two identical batteries in parallel with each other, the current flowing through that circuit for the same load 
is going to be a little bit greater than the current flowing through our uh, circuit over here where we have one battery supplying current to that load. So this is a subtle difference. We have to go all the way out to our uh, fourth decimal place in this example in order to show that the current coming from our identical batteries in parallel is going to be a little bit greater than the current supplied by one battery within our circuit.